This is the first look that I ever did that got picked up by Brad Mondo for one of his reaction videos. And not very cute. Um. <laughs> it did not go well. What's up rainbow heads? If this is not your first time here, welcome back. If this is your first time here, hello, how are you? My name is Caitlin Ford. I am a 10 year veteran hairstylist as well as an award winning colorist who specializes in really, really weird hair color. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. As we all know, 2020 has not been the easiest of years. You know, just slightly, slightly problematic. Just a little bit. At this point, I'm just grateful for the last remaining speck of sanity that I still somehow have managed to hang on to. For those of you who don't know, my largest online platform is actually on Instagram. I have about 180,000 followers over there. And I've actually been creating crazy hair content on Instagram for about five years now. When I first launched my YouTube channel, one of my plans was to actually go through and use some of my old content, my old techniques, and create longer form versions of that with my YouTube channel and on this new platform. So it actually occurred to me that it might be a fun idea to share this with you guys and kind of show you guys some of my old content it would give me an, a chance to explain to you how some of these older looks how I created them in a little bit more depth but also I would love your guys' feedback for you guys to let me know which of these old looks maybe you'd like to see longer videos about or know more about so I thought it'd be cool to kind of like dive back through and see what's on there so basically I'm doing a reaction video to my own old content but also selfishly I thought it would be a fun kind of like walk down memory lane um, kind of like going back to some of those like happier, more nostalgic times and kind of reliving that experience a little bit. So I'm excited to show you guys. All right, so we are gonna start all the way back in 2015, a much simpler, simpler time in the world. <laughs> I used to post a lot more client photos at that time, but progressively my Instagram kind of changed and I sort of allowed it to become a little bit more art driven rather than necessarily focusing on client clients because I wanted to do more like really overtly creative projects. But yeah, back in the day definitely showed a lot more balayage and more simplistic type of colors. This first look that I'm going to show you is still one of my all time favorites personally. This was definitely my first like very experimental project where I was really trying to push myself and think outside of the box with hair color. When I created this, the owner of the salon that I worked at at the time knew that I was super, super passionate about color and he gave me this really amazing opportunity. We were collaborating with this local magazine and part of the trade in that collaboration was there was going to be an advertorial for our salon within the magazine and the salon owner actually asked if I would be willing to create a look that would then be photographed and used in this advertorial. I knew that this look was going to obviously be in a magazine but also it was going to be professionally photographed and I had never had the opportunity to have any of my work photographed professionally like that before and so I was super excited about the opportunity and I really wanted to push the limits and do something really crazy and really different and and this is what I came up with. I had this idea to create this hair that looked sort of like ripples that you see like reflecting in water. And actually the technical execution of this was not particularly great, but it photographed so beautifully. This image in particular ended up getting picked up by all of these different hair publications who wanted to write articles about it. And this was my very first hair creation to ever be nominated for, an, for a pretty major award. And when I say this wasn't executed very well technically, there's a lot that I would do differently with it now, knowing what I know and, and having the tools that are in my toolbox now. And even though the finish of it looked beautiful, just knowing that technically I could have executed this a lot better pushed me so much and stretching my own abilities and really practicing and trying new things and really sort of expanding my understanding of doing hair. So I can be a bit of a perfectionist and something that I've learned about myself over time is sometimes like being too perfectionist can cause you to sort of stagnate and stand in the same place because you're too afraid to go for it. You're too afraid to try something because you're afraid it's not going to be good enough or you're going to fail at it. And one of the cool things about hair or one of the cool 
cool things that hair has taught me is that you can always work on getting better, but you cannot let fear hold you back from getting started on something. I am so proud of this look. I really, really am. Even with the changes that I would make to it now, I love, love, love this picture. It's interesting because looking back, there are some images like this one that I am super proud of technique wise because I really was going for something like with the technical side of this like for the for this one I was really wanting to do this like crazy like diagonal striped look and obviously the technique that I used at the time works like you can clearly see these diagonals but there are things that I would do a lot different now to tighten this up this was in 2016 that I did this one but yeah that's kind of a fun crazy one you cannot go wrong with split dye I mean what is better than not having to choose between two colors that you're thinking about like why not have it all girl you can have everything you want <laughs> This look is also from 2016 and I still love this color so much. I basically wanted to do this like pastel watercolor type of pattern, but I wanted one side to have like cool tones and one side to have warm tones. This particular image actually won me the opportunity to go work with a color line called Pulp Riot before it was even launched. And another image from this series actually ended up being used on a billboard out in LA to advertise the color line, which was pretty freaking rad. And I've been asked many, many times about the little dangly mabobs that you see like on the ends of the braids and those I actually made myself. Maybe sometime I need to do like a DIY hair accessory video or something. Guys, let me know if that's something that you're interested in seeing. This color was actually what I got to create as a result of winning the contest that I entered with the last image that I just showed you. Pulp Riot flew me out to Vegas and I got to be a part of this big collab they were doing with a bunch of other stylists that I, I really admired. It was so cool to get to work with all these people that I had been talking to online. I never um, had the opportunity to meet before. It's so funny because as you can see this image, I called it Lisa Frank hair. And during this time in internet culture, this is how all those super clickbaity beauty news articles would get created. A lot of these articles would have these headlines like Lisa Frank hair is the newest, latest, greatest, most amazing thing taken over the internet by storm. They made it sound like every hairstylist in the, on the planet was like forcing this trend down their clients throats. Like it was just something that we were all in unison doing at the same time even though it was probably only like five hairstylists at one time using hashtag Lisa Frank and like they were doing it because they were hoping that people who are looking at the Lisa Frank hashtag would stumble across their hair work and maybe want to follow them it was all very strategic it's super funny kind of like being like on this side of social media and kind of understanding how those sorts of strategies and stuff work and get played out on the internet. These images got used a lot in all of these like Lisa Frank hair articles. And this was in October of 2016 and by this time I was really starting to master direction in my placements and the blend going on in this color like I am so proud. I'm still super proud of like it looks so great. 2016 was just like a great hair year for me like I was doing I was cranking out these projects I think on a weekly basis getting that content I was like content queen back then and this is one of my favorite rainbows that I have ever done on anyone's hair I just love how like blended it looks I also love that it almost looks like thermal imaging just really cool uh this one was a very crazy placement I always end up like making my work way harder than it actually needs to be because I'm an insane perfectionist. But yeah, I love this rainbow look. Okay, so this one is from 2017 and this is when I really started to get more and more depth with trying to get that holographic effect out of the hair. This one, like technically, again, is not one of my favorites as far as like how I went about doing this. But for me, this definitely paved the way as far as trying some of these more like micro striped holographic style looks. This is one of my all time favorites that I've ever, ever done. And it's one of my most like viral videos, like in terms of how many times it was shared by different publications and whatnot. It also has, I think, 2 million views on Instagram. The day that I did this, um, Starbucks launched this really disgusting disgusting tasting drink called the unicorn frappuccino like it looked so cute but it was nasty i i still feel a little traumatized by it you know and it was actually kind of sad because like i was really genuinely excited to try it when i saw the drink i thought it was going to be like this like kind of milkshakey smoothie like 
grapefruit and cream y kind of like flavor but instead it was just like so unbearably sour and don't get me wrong I love sour like I love Sour Patch Kids I love sour candy I am a sour candy fanatic but this drink was like sour but just awful just it was not what I expected it to be but it sure was cute <laughs> But I had this friend at the time who really let me do whatever I wanted to do with her hair for the most part. And before she came in for her appointment that day, she picked up one of these unicorn frappuccinos and we decided to go ahead and make her hair color look like that drink. Cause I was like, that is a great color scheme. Like let's, let's just do that. This particular kind of placement is called a shine line. A shine line is when you have one color centered between another color. In a traditional context, it's almost meant to look like the light is hitting the hair and it's causing this like flat of color in the middle although any type of placement like this is considered a shine line it doesn't necessarily have to have that like optical illusion type of quality to it I loved how this came out and it looks dead on with the colors of the drink like it was so fun taking the pictures with the drink and her hair and just seeing like how like close it looked like it was really really dead on freaking unicorn frappuccino hair man i love this one this is another one that actually earned me a nomination for a really really big hair award and this is definitely a continuation off of the whole like holographic prism iridescent sort of color scheme at this point i was getting really really great like really building that understanding of placement direction and elevation when it comes to to hair color and i loved how just like feather soft these pastels look they like blended together so well and they just had this like angelic kind of quality to them i was super super stoked whenever i did this one and this one i created at the tail end of 2017. this is another one that i'm super proud of because my model here draven didn't have like an ideal canvas to start with or a traditionally ideal canvas to start with as far as her hair goes there was a lot of different things going on with her hair she had like seven inches of regrowth and lots of color buildup on her ends and i knew there was no way that i was going to be able to bleach her out completely and so this look really forced me to think very very differently about color much differently than how I'd ever thought before because up until this point most of my colors were being done by just bleaching out everybody's hair to like as blonde as I could possibly get them and then going from there but her hair is so naturally dark and also pretty coarse textured and I knew there was no way that I could bleach her to kingdom come because her hair would just disintegrate those coarser textures are just a lot more fragile when it comes to bleach it really over aggravates that texture and so when I did this look I had to be very strategic in how I placed it to get the colors to work the way that I wanted to basically I had to make sure that yellow that's in the middle that brightest color fell above the line where she had color build up on her ends so the top part bleached out lighter because that was her natural regrowth and then the ends didn't get quite as light so I used that middle part where those two points met and I made sure that my yellow since that was going to be the lightest color fell above that point so there was like a lot of brightness right there and I love this because you have like this like gradient within the rainbow where it gets like very dark at the top and the bottom but you can kind of see this like reflective like raven-esque rainbow reflection in her hair which is super cool like I was really really proud of this look this video here needs a special mention for a few different reasons this is the first look that I ever did that got picked up by Brad Mondo for one of his reaction videos and okay so this one was just like the strangest hair coloring process I think I've ever seen what what is going on? That is so not necessary. I get, I'm, what? That looks like so much work. I'm all about doing less work and yeah, just doing less work. <laughs> I don't know where I, I was heading with that, but just less work is great for me. Oh my God, I wonder what this is gonna look like. I don't think I've even, I don't think I've seen the end of this. Not very cute. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. This is tragic. Imagine when she doesn't have it styled or anything. People just think she like dumped a bunch of box dye in her head and like missed a bunch of spots. 
Like, it's just tragic. It did not go well. Brad Mondo was not a fan of this look. This one was in 2018, the very beginning of 2018. And as you guys can see in this video, I am like painting the hair up against this like crazy plexiglass board thing that I like constructed myself like a freaking mad scientist. And the reason why I did this wasn't necessarily because I was trying to get other people to do this like as like a go-to technique or anything. This was actually more for the purpose of like demonstrating the principles of elevation and direction and how that affects the hair. I had shown techniques similar to this using like poster board at really big hair shows. And so this was sort of like an exaggeration of those theories, direction and elevation, just as sort of like an artistic reminder to hairstylists to be aware of what they're doing and how they're positioning hair and how that can change the way a color looks or a haircut looks in the finish when you're really paying attention to how you're directing the hair and elevating it and all of that fun stuff. I personally really liked this color, even though it was definitely a big step outside of like my typical create like rainbowy rainbows and pastels and a lot of the candy colors that were like super popular at the time. I was just looking to move in a different direction. And this video does have like actually a pretty happy ending because even though Brad didn't like it, um, I actually won my very first big accolade with this video. So I personally take a lot of pride in this hair color. This color is another one from 2018 and it went super crazy on my page. It shows that I am nearly at 10 million views on this video. This video shows like a very awesome and super, super simple color block placement for short hair. I basically just did this deep zigzag part across the top of the hair, colored the back of that black and then the front of it pink. And it gave this like really great texture to the color where you see these sort of like chunks of black breaking up a part over the pink in the hair. And I did another version of this with yellow in the back and more of like rainbow stripes in the front, which was also super fun, but this one did not get 10 million views. Oh, and here we have my OG rainbow bangs. So the placement with these rainbow bangs are pretty much the same. But at this point when I did this, I only used red, yellow, and blue in my bangs. I didn't do like mostly a full rainbow. I was being all art school and like being like, oh yeah, man, primary colors. Even though these technically aren't primary colors, but whatever. Whenever I did this, the yellow stripe in the middle of the rainbow would like bleed down over the blue stripe and it would always turn the ends green. So it always ended up looking more like Rasta than rainbow, but I still thought it looked super cool. This particular client had a dream to have like dark black hair that had this like green reflection to it. And getting any kind of alternative tones to kind of show up and reflect and black hair is extremely difficult. A lot of people always want that like blue black type of hair and it is extremely, extremely difficult because when the hair is that dark, the pigments are so dense that you just don't get as much like light reflection from it. And so it's difficult to see those undertones. So what I ended up doing was bleaching out the shine line band at the top of my client's hair. And then we colored over that with this super dark green and it ended up giving it this really cool optical illusion. Like it looked like her hair had this like green reflection in it as as you can see. I actually got to work on a Paul Mitchell campaign at the beginning of this year. They were getting ready to launch these blue violet demis. And I ended up doing a very similar technique on my model's hair using purple. All right, so now we are moving into 2019 and all of these looks that I'm about to show you are looks that were created after I had my accident. I didn't produce nearly as much content that year. I was obviously dealing with a lot mentally and personally during that year and I just was not as motivated to crank out the content as much as I had done in previous years. And also I started shifting towards more YouTube content at that time, which is a lot more time consuming to create is something that I have realized. But even though I created less content, I'm super proud of the content that I did create that year. I really love this particular one. Very alternative look, but this orange kind of upside down gradient at the top right side up gradient at the bottom and then you have this like turquoise gradient in the middle. I love this look and turquoise and orange, I just 
love anything honestly that is a mixture of like opposite tones so this is definitely one of my personal all-time favorites there's this really cool rainbow shine line that I did on this dark wig which I made myself because for whatever reason I decided after maiming my hand why not hand sew a wig like that seems like a good idea so this wig took me 12 hours just to sew it together and then I colored it which took another million hours to do because I'm a lunatic I'm just a freaking crazy person definitely not planning on hand sewing any more wigs anytime soon those two looks as well as this one right here which I actually have a YouTube video on called less bleach less damage I'll insert a card up here or here wherever it pops up I think it pops up right here um, so you guys can check out that video if you haven't the those three looks actually ended up winning best color collection of the year at the behind the chair one shot awards and definitely one of the proudest moments of my life for a lot of reasons not just because of the challenges that i had just overcome or was actively dealing with but also because it was a really big editorial category and these images were up against like some of the top editorial artists in the world um, this was a peer voted on competition. I photographed these images myself. And so to win such a huge award was, was really, really huge. So like, yeah, 2019 was a pretty, pretty great year. It was a challenging year for many reasons, but it was also a, a, a pretty rad year as well. The last look that I'm gonna show you guys before we're pretty much caught up at this point is this really cool diagonal gradient look. I just really like this. It's very, very similar to this that last look I just showed you, the one that there's a YouTube video about. Very similar as far as technique goes. But what I wanted to do is show you this picture compared to that diagonal color that I criticized at the towards the beginning of the video here just so that you guys can see the difference between 2016 versus 2019. There is a whole lot of practice, learning, and growing that separates these two images and these three years. And I have to say, it was super therapeutic to go back through my old content and just really kind of take in the change and growth that I've experienced like as an artist over the years. Like I am such a perfectionist. Sometimes I really lose sight of the big picture and it's hard for me to really interpret internalize my own like accomplishments at some times and it makes me a self-sabotager in some aspects of my life so like going back through was a great reminder to me of like where I've been and like what I can accomplish if I really apply myself and really put my passion into something there have been moments in my life throughout this journey of doing hair that I never thought I would get the opportunities that I got. So if you have something in your life that you're really passionate about, apply yourself. Don't get discouraged by setbacks. Don't let perfectionism and fear destroy your self image. You are capable of so much more than you think you are. So yeah, that's your your today's dose of positivity. If you haven't taken your, your daily positivity tablet, there you go. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this like walk down memory lane today with me. This was actually a really fun video to do. And like I said, it was personally pretty therapeutic let me know down in the comments if there's anything that you guys saw today that you would like to see like a longer more explanative video about i don't know if explanative it's probably not a word make sure you follow me over on instagram if you don't already and definitely make sure you hit the subscribe button if you want to see even more crazy hair color content you guys have been asking about color placements on curly hair for a long time so guess what the next video i'm going to be coloring this amazing wig right here look how freaking long this is like holy hair batman like this is crazy i am going to spend 40 years coloring this wig i think i'm going to end up doing like a holographic placement on this is, is what i'm pretty sure i'm going to do because i got a lot of questions on my holographic hair video about what that pattern would look like on curly hair so i think that's probably what we're going to do on this that's going to be my next video. So if you want to see me color this wig in my next video, hit the subscribe button. Make sure your notifications are turned on because like you don't want to miss me torturing myself over coloring this wig. Trust me, it's going to be entertaining for you and painful for me. Anyway, until next time, remember guys, hair completes the look. I'll see you later, rainbow heads.